Shubhakarjan. Um, he, reading about him, has made me, and this is just how I come across it, so again, I can't say enough. I, I'm really, um, with all humility, I'd like to say there's a lot I could have learned, but uh, from I, I'll just share with you what I've learned in such a little time. Um, by reading his stories, I've, I've, I've come to um, come across two major things. Uh, one is identity of self, like how to reach, uh, like how to reach uh, the ultimate stage or the connection, how to make connection with the cosmic energy by identi identifying yourself or by realizing by self-realization. And the other part of it is uh, how can you connect, connect or realizing the oneness of the universe with everything and with our own self. So thoughtless awareness is something that we talk about all the time. So that's the other thing that we've learned from his stories. There are uh, two stories that are really uh, popular uh, when we talk about Raja Jana. There are lots of it that I could share, but the two stories that really strike out was, one was with, uh, um, I'm going to probably pronounce the name wrong. It's Ashtivakra. Ashtivakra. Um, and this is the, before uh, Raja Janak actually had the awareness, um, he would have um, assemblies of wise men come over and talk about knowledge. And they would share knowledge with each other, pretty much like something like we do. And at one time, Ashtavakra was also, uh, aware, his upbringing was from poor, he has a poor background. His upbringing was not absolutely knowledgeable. He was also very deformed. And when this uh, uh, person comes, walks into a court full of uh, knowledgeable people, they look at him and they look at his deformity and they start laughing. And when everybody is laughing, he also starts laughing with them. He's a 12-year-old boy. And Raja Janak is really surprised and he's like, okay, I understand why everybody is laughing because obviously he was so deformed that just his appearance kind of made everybody laugh. But I don't understand why you're laughing because they are all laughing at you. And he goes, I'm laughing at everything else that's happening over here because according to me, you're trying to gather the knowledge. You're trying to go deep into a knowledge, but all you have over here is a room full of skinners. And he's like, what do you mean by that? And he said, it just means that they are not looking beyond this, the self, or they are uh, beyond my appearance. So as yogis, what we need to do is we need to look beyond ourselves and we need to realize that there is one divine soul that's pure soul that's in all of us. And once we realize that, once we have that self-realization, uh, that would be the first step in, um, in creating awareness. So Raja Janak actually um, bowed down in front of him and he said in front of him and he said um, how did you reach this level of um, this understanding. Ev understanding of evolution like how do you have you're just like you know he's really in his mind he was just a child he's a 12 year old but he has this understanding and that uh, that's the first thing um, what after that what I understand is if you ask if you if you are able to understand, if you have self-realization, and if you realize that you are the the you are your own guru, you are your divine self, then you are able to uh, become a seeker, and that's what starts. Like we talk about Mahal uh, Mahalakshmi, that's the whole chakra. It talks about how you can become a seeker. The other part of Ma Raja Janak is being is all about Maya. So the other part of it is. Uh, connecting with the universe. Our uh, connection. <laughs> I hope I'm saying everything. The vibrations are amazing. Yeah. Can, yeah. can you feel? Yeah. Fullness, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah, so it's perfect, beautiful. And beautiful example is one that we don't have on that article. So it's great that you chose this one. Something new, perfect. Um, the other one is about, um, and again, this is my understanding of it. So I did go to the Sahaja Yogi site and all the all sites within Sahaja Yogi and I read it and I even the book that she recommends on that, I read that as well. So the other story that I would like to share about, uh, this is with reference to Nachiketra. Nachiketra? Okay. Nachiketra, okay. <laughs> I apologize for the pronunciations of all the names. Um, this is... This is when Raja Janak has now learned to be detached. So that is the key to being a yogi. It is when you have an awareness that you are one. And, and this is something I'd like to share right from the way I wrote it is because when I was writing, it just came to my mind in the middle of my meeting. So I literally just typed it in. And I felt like when I reread it, I'm like, okay, that's really good. 
Um, there is no such thing as right or wrong, existence or non-existence, moral or immoral. We can discover our true identity by recognizing our existence as the pure soul. And that as individual, we are, we are the awareness of all things. And this is coming from Mataji's side. As soon as we truly realize that we become Im that this, we become immune to materialistic things around us. In other words, we have thoughtless awareness. So as soon as we realize we are ourselves, we get thoughtless awareness. Um, so in terms of detachment, this is all detachment because now we realize that we are we are uh, the things like around us. We are oneness. We have a oneness with these things. So we're no longer attached to all these things. Raja Janak said, um, you know, there was a very good example uh, he gave to Nachiketa. He said, walk around the room with me, uh, in the room with me, um, and follow me with a bowl full of milk. And uh, I think in one of the videos, we tried to actually demonstrate that. Where we were walking around, I don't think we actually did that, but we tried to walk around the room with a spoon and an egg. The idea is really simple. When you're actually focusing on something, um, all through the day, Nachiketa was uh, trying to focus on the bowl of milk and making sure that none, not one drop of the milk would spill. So as he walks around the, like, the entire day, his entire focus is on the bowl. In the end of the day, the king was like, okay, so what did you notice? He goes, I didn't notice anything. He said there was a big ceremony, there was the like, you know, big dance and drama, and Nachiketa was like, yeah, but I didn't notice anything because my whole attention was on the bowl. And King Jan, the, to, in response to that, King Janet said, that's exactly how I detach myself. I pay attention to what I am doing. Like, I, my, I do not let my attention wander. We watch different things. We watch our kids, we watch our um, house, we watch all these things. If we watch our thoughts and we um, try to, um, to, to keep them under control, then that's how we can st learn to be detached. I might not have said that right. Okay. Um, so that is about detachment, and in terms of uh, like, in terms of uh, Maya and, and how King Janak really achieved this was, uh, you get but always say, felt. Say what Maya is, because some don't know. Okay, Ma so it's really well defined. I can probably try and go into the definition, and if it it doesn't come out right, then I can probably explain it again. The way it was explained is Maya is the connection of, like, it, it is what puts everything in its place. It is an illusion, and it is almost confusing in the sense that it is there, but it is not there. It's all in your, it's, it's not in your mind, but it's all an illusion. So if you believe in the, oh, uh, in the divine power, then everything you, uh, if you trust in him, then the Maya will have, and uh, you will, Maya will not be able to touch you. You will be detached or away from all these illusions that is around you. And that is what Maya is all about. Just that. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, so Nachiketa and King Janak's story, so to, finish, to wrap that off, um, Nachiketa, and I'm sorry, I should have actually started with this. Nachiketa was, uh, was one of the, one of the disciples of a guru and he found of, of the sage. So they follow, they renounce the world and they actually live on bare minimums and they follow uh, these, like, you know, um, uh, they go through, uh, so they, they renounce the world, right? Like they don't have any luxuries, they don't live in palaces, they live in huts, they live uh, on bare minimum uh, requirements. King um, Janak, is a king, so he has to live like a king. He has all the like all his jewelries, his clothes, his palace. So uh, every time he goes to some of these sages, the sages will fall on his feet and try, try to get his blessing. In terms of, uh, so one time Nachiketa got mad with his guru and he said, you know, why are we falling on his feet? He's a king. He has all these um, maya or all these possessions that he's uh, hanging on to. So why are we praying to him? And the Guru said, why don't you spend some time with him and you will understand uh, why I consider him as a, a learned soul, like an evolved soul. Mm -hmm. And so Nachiketa followed up with it, like followed the king. And the Guru said, it's not what you give up. It's sometimes like people like King Janak is more, is, is better because they have all these things, but he doesn't have attachment to any of these things. 
So Nachiketa goes to the king and he says, give me self-realization. And the king says, you can have everything that I have, but self-realization is something that you need to get by yourself. It's not something I can give you. Um, so he starts following the king around and he starts learning it. At one point of time, the king goes to, uh, is meditating in the river and Nachiketa is with him. Nachiketa is supposed to be the sage, somebody who already meditates, somebody who has control of his thoughts and has no detachment. He has nothing in, his, in this world. He's like a sage, right? Like the people who are always like follower. And king has everything. Some villagers come running and they say, oh, your palace is burning. And Nachiketa looks at the king, but the king does not break his meditation. Then, um, then some people come back and they say, oh, your family is running away. But the king believes in the divine power, so he does not break his meditation. Um, Nachiketa is obviously distracted. Then the villagers come and say, the fire is coming over here and it's going to burn your entire possessions, your clothes. So Nachiketa has his clothes by the... Um, the riverside. So he gets out of the meditation, gets out of the river to save his clothes. But King Janak does not do that. Um, when he comes out, he realizes all these burning, that the flames that he could see was really an illusion, that it was never happening. And that's what King Janak said. You have to be truly detached and you have to believe in divine power. And if you do so, then all these things will fall in place. And that's the story of Nachiketa, but he realizes that even Without, even with his, all this meditation, he was attached to his two clothes, whereas the king, even with all the possessions, was always detached. That's all. Any connection between you and Sri Raja Janaka, or what did you feel, or? I, I felt like, um, I felt like I needed to, I, when I was reading through it, I, sl I started realizing that even while I'm doing a lot of things, I still need to do a lot more detachment part of it, because on, this, uh, on a very uh, different level, I'm really, I'm really attached with my kids, my family, and uh, and I'm actually attached. So it's not where it's, it's. I have to go to a stage where I can be connected and I can love them and I can provide for them, but not have the extreme attachment. Like I can be detached. To, uh, to that, so I, I still have to work on that. Part. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And this is what Shimada Jikanda says that now you you have a global family, and so we have to transcend the Sahaj gurus. We transcend to everything, even nationality. Now we become uh, you you you, um, you enter into the spiritual country. So it's so interesting. Everything becomes subtler and wider. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you.